morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, I had a voice of radio, so today I am bringing you a theory that I am starting to feel very, very strongly about. Loads of you have been asking me when my next VGC video is coming. This isn't exactly that. But it is about the video games because, ladies and gentlemen, I have become convinced that we are getting a remake of Diamond and Pearl for the Switch. But rather than just say that, rather than just tweet it out, I thought it would be fun to sit here and go through my theory. I don't have any advanced information. I might be wrong. I don't know this for a fact, but what I'm going to do is lay out my idea, lay out my opinions, and hopefully by the end of the video, you're going to be thinking, oh my goodness, Ross is right. Of course we're getting a remake of Diamond and Pearl, and if I had to guess, I would say before the end of the year. So, first of all, let's take a look at the release date of the Pokemon video game so far. This is something that really makes it look like the remake is coming. So we got red and blue 96 in Japan, 98 in the USA, and then gold and silver came in 1999, ruby and sapphire came in 2002, and then we had our first remake, fire red and leaf green, a remake of red and green in 2004. Diamond and pearl came along in 2006, so 12 years, you know, it's about time for a remake, I'd say. And then our second remake, Heart Gold Soul Silver, in 2009. Black and White came along in 2010, before we weirdly, for the first time ever, got a sequel set, because Black 2 and White 2 came out in 2012. Now, they're all Japanese release dates before we went to worldwide release dates with X and Y, which came out in 2013 worldwide. And then we got our last remake, Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, in 2014. We then got Sun and Moon in 2016, and the second lot of sequels, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon in 2017. So with that in mind, one of the things we need to look at is the gap between generations. Because if Sun and Moon came out in 2016, then we need to know what the earliest we can expect Generation 8 to actually be. And the gap is always three or four years. So between red and green and gold and silver, there was a three-year gap, 96 to 99. For gold and silver and ruby and sapphire, there was a three-year gap, 99 to 2002. Ruby and sapphire to diamond and pearl, there was a four-year gap, 2002 to 2006. Diamond and pearl to black and white, there was another four-year gap, 2006 to 2010. Black and white to X and Y, there's a three-year gap, 2010 to 2013. And X and Y to Sun and Moon, there was another three-year gap, 2013 to 2016. Which means we should not be expecting Generation 8 until 2019 or 2020 at the earliest. And we're all expecting a Pokemon game to come along. We're all expecting the Switch to see some Pokemon action. A Pokemon game has been announced for the Switch. But I don't think we can expect Generation 8 this year. And even if it comes next year, I think we can really rely on the very tail end of next year. I don't think it's going to come before that. I mean, having a two-year gap between generations is something we've never seen. And I do not expect it to be seen anytime soon. Now, in terms of the announcement Nintendo made, they did, during a Pokemon Focus Direct last year, they did announce that there was going to be a Pokemon game for the Switch. They announced that one was in development. But they didn't actually tell us what it was. They just said it was in development. Now, I have two theories here. Theory number one, they were actually announcing Generation 8, and they showed us absolutely nothing, no gameplay, no footage, no concept art, etc. Which means that, quite frankly, it's really early on in development. And theory number two, they were going, there is going to be a game on Switch. They didn't want to announce it was a Diamond and Pearl remake until closer to release, but that was what they initially meant. Now, don't get me wrong, Generation 8 is obviously in development. Pokemon, I'm willing to bet, as soon as they finished Sun and Moon, they started working on Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, and before they even finished working that, I'm sure they were doing concept work, etc., pre-production for Gen 8. Generation 8 is coming, but like I've said, it's way too early. Now, another thing to bear in mind, we usually get a remake between the main generations. After Ruby and Sapphire, we got a remake of Fire Red and Leaf Green. After... 
Diamond and Pearl, we got a remake of Gold and Silver. And after X and Y, we got the remake of Ruby and Sapphire. The one exception was after Black and White, we went straight into X and Y, only having the sequel sets Black 2 and White 2. With that exception, we've gone Ruby and Sapphire. Oh, now it's time for a remake. Diamond and Pearl. Now it's time for a remake. X and Y. Now it's time for a remake. So maybe that means we're going to go Sun, Moon, Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, Generation 8. But I'm not buying it, ladies and gentlemen. I think we're going to be having a remake of Diamond and Pearl. Although the fact that there was no remake after Black and White, just Black 2 and White 2, and there was a sequel after Sun and Moon, that would be a bit of an argument against my theory here. Now, this one is tenuous at best. This is not the best reason I've got. But the remakes tend to be five years apart. So far, we had 2004 Fire Red Leaf Green, 2009 Heart Gold Soul Silver, 2014 Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, so surely 2019 would be the remake of Diamond and Pearl. Although, honestly, in terms of remakes, it makes way more sense to do it late 2018. But it's not just all reckless speculation based on dates and what makes sense, because I was teaching a class about recruitment the other day, and I just happened to go over to glassdoor.co.uk, and there are a lot of job listings for the Pokemon company in terms of translations. They want a freelance translator, Japanese to Spanish, Japanese to Italian, Japanese to German, Japanese to French, a localization associate, a localization specialist, Japanese to Spanish, a localization editor, French, a localization editor, Italian. Some of these are freelance work, which means it could be any project whatsoever. Some of them are localization specialists. Gee whiz, what would you need localization for? Maybe a new video game. And... Some of them have minimum contracts, and a minimum contract could be, we need you to do this work for this new game, but maybe we'll keep you on in the future if we have other work to do. And I know what you might be thinking, come on Ross, Pokemon have to translate a lot of things, and they do. Everything from video games, to strategy guides, to children's books, to the website itself, Pokemon need a lot of translators. But if we look at the primary responsibilities, to translate everything necessary for the localization of computer games, including in-game text, manuals, and strategy guides. Now again, this doesn't have to be for a remake of Diamond and Pearl. It could be for a game like Detective Pikachu, not Detective Pikachu, that game has already shipped. It could potentially be for Generation 8. But I refuse to believe Generation 8 is coming that soon, and you don't need translators and localization specialists until the game is essentially done. Until the script is finished, until the game has actually taken shape, you don't need localization specialists and translators. They come in at the end of the process. So unless Generation 8 is way sooner than we imagine, unless Generation 8 is coming this year or early next year, and Pokemon are already in a position where they've designed the game and written the script and all of that and are heavily into development, we don't need this. We don't need these translators this early. We only got Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon in November 2017. I don't believe we're going to be getting a new new game before that. It takes way too much time. But... Taking something like Diamond and Pearl, games where the design is already done, where we're not designing new Pokemon, where we can reuse huge parts of the script, where the basic story is written, okay, they need to rejig it, but you know what, ladies and gentlemen? It really does make sense to go for that. That is going to be a much, much quicker game. This would also allow Pokemon to test a game on the Switch before they go hard into Gen 8. Do a remake on the Switch, oh, this is what the Switch can do, now let's go to Gen 8. Now, they've never actually done that before, because the first game on Game Boy Advance was Ruby and Sapphire, a new game. The first game on DS was Diamond and Pearl, a new game, not a remake. And the first game on 3DS was X and Y, a new game, not a remake. Okay, 
that does hurt my argument a little bit, but it still makes sense to test the Switch with a remake before you go fully into the Switch. Now the other thing is here, Nintendo has no big full game. In 2017, we saw Mario Odyssey. There's nothing been revealed so far that's the big full game for 2018. Now, we know Super Smash Bros. could be coming this year, but we also know that Nintendo's online service is launching in September. Why would they not launch that with Super Smash Bros.? That makes way, way too much sense. So this would fill a gap for Nintendo in their full lineup this year, which at the moment, it seems like they really need. My guess, Diamond and Pearl remakes late this year and Generation 8 coming in 2020. That is what I believe is going to happen. Now, as a side note, it's not coming to the 3DS. Pokemon said that the next main game would be coming to the Nintendo Switch. And if you don't think remakes are a main game, then why was Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire the games used in competitive Pokemon tournaments when they were the newest game? I know they're remakes. They're still main games, ladies and gentlemen. They will be coming to the Switch. Also, on the 3DS, we've had Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, Sun and Moon, and Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. We already had four lots of games on the 3DS. I really don't think they'll bring another one. Pokemon have done what they can with the Nintendo 3DS. So to recap here, it's too early for Generation 8. We've got no info about Gen 8 at all. We are about due for remakes. We know that Pokemon is going to be coming to the Switch. There's a whole bunch of translator and localization job adverts. The timing of previous releases all point to this. There is a gap in the Nintendo lineup for the end of this year, and it makes sense to test on the Switch before going all in on Generation 8. And that is a very long-winded way of saying, I believe we are getting remakes of Diamond and Pearl, and I think they're going to be coming to the Nintendo Switch late this year, or maybe early next year. But you might disagree with me, ladies and gentlemen, in which case, good news. There's a comment section. Give me your arguments for why they are coming. Give me your arguments for why they aren't. Go nuts, but be nice. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcgradio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus pods, then head on over to patreon.com slash ptcgradio, and do check out my other channel, Wossy Plays, we're close to a thousand subs, help us out. But by far the most important thing, as always, is to look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching, my name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.